So you don't normally think of Visa and Internet of Things, right? So we'll talk a bit about that and also a little bit about how Visa has been changing over the last year and a half. So um, we'll start off with about Visa and then we'll get into Internet of Things and how we're trying to engage in that ecosystem. So this is the group I'm in, Innovation and Strategic Partnerships. It's actually a new group that was formed about a year and a half ago. And uh, that's about the time we got a new CEO, so no coincidence there. Uh, one of the things in a big company is that uh, innovation, everybody wants to do that, but it's kind of hard to do in a big company. Because your products are huge, right? They make billions of dollars. So anything you do that's innovative is always just lost in the rounding, right? So, and it's more important to try and make that billion make you know, 10% more. So we were finding that innovation wasn't happening at the scale and the pace that we wanted to. Also in a company like Visa, you have to know our brand is built on security, right? And ubiquity and reliability. So innovation doesn't look like that at first, right? Innovation's about being messy at first and then figuring out how to get it there once you figure out the good idea. So um, we figured let's create a new group that has some different DNA than that, right? So they brought in people like me that have a more of a Silicon Valley telecom background, people that don't mind taking risks and breaking things. <clears throat> and then let the core business do what it needs to do and then let us go and do some crazy things and try and change things. Uh, the other part of it is strategic partnerships. And you know, we have uh, companies like Cisco that is a huge part of VisaNet. VisaNet is our asset, right? That's the thing that that Visa provides to the banks and to the merchants. And it's amazingly important to have those, you know, 12 nines reliability that you guys help us, help us get, right? <clears throat> but Cisco has other capabilities, as an example, that we haven't taken advantage of. So our group doesn't really mess with the, the normal day-to-day -day stuff. Our group is, what else can we do together with people who are market makers, right? So, some of the things you've seen come out of that are Apple Pay. Anybody have Apple Pay or use Apple Pay yet? So that's something we kind of co-developed with them. Um, Samsung Pay is a part of that. We've done things with the Square and with Amazon and with others like that. So it's been a very good year in terms of some of those things we've been able to come out with with the strategic partnerships. And stay tuned, there's more to come as well. <clears throat> Um, the innovation side, the, uh, the big thing that we did this last year is something you've probably never ever heard of. It's called tokenization. And that was actually the invention that went behind Apple Pay. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but it's a great example, I think, of, of understanding Visa. Actually, let me go to the next slide <clears throat> and tell you a little bit more about, about Visa. This is our motto. I kind of like it. I put it up here because it, it kind of makes sense, right? The best way to pay and be paid for everyone everywhere. And uh, that really is what the company is trying to do. We're trying to be more everywhere and trying to be for more everyone, right? So market segments in different countries trying to expand both of that, not just trying to play the nice middle ground. <clears throat> Pardon me a second. So uh, a couple things to know about Visa. This is something I didn't really know till I joined the company. We don't act, how many have Visa cards, by the way? Oh yeah, I like this market share, this is good, okay. This is good. It's okay to have other cards, by the way, so. We can't have 100% market share, we get in trouble if that happens, right? So. Um, so Visa did not issue you that card, your bank issued that card to you, right? So don't say, hey, please give me a Visa card, I can't, right, the bank does that. The other thing we don't do is we don't set the, the interest rates. How much you pay for your card, that's all the banks, you know, how much they pay for all the, all the fees, that's not us, nothing to do with it. Uh, if you're a merchant, you know, the amount you pay per swipe, you know, for that, we don't set that either. That's set by other people. You might be curious to know, we make tenths of a percent per transaction. So our business, as huge as it is, if you look at our results, they're huge and they're growing by double digits every year. It's really an impressive business to have that scale and to grow at that pace. It's just unprecedented. <clears throat> well, that's what we make it on. We make it on basis points, just fractions of a percent. Right? So it really is about the network. It really is about growing the pie. The, um, this is really our business here. 
it isn't really about payments, we're about electronic commerce. We're really about, oh by the way, those, those words you saw before, that was about 80% of all the words you're going to see in this presentation. It's pretty much over for words right now. So. <clears throat> So this is our enemy over here. We really don't like cash. We're trying to convert cash to digital stuff, right? We like electronic transactions. That's what we're trying to facilitate. Our enemy, really on my side, on the innovation side, we're not really trying to beat any competition. You know, the MasterCard, Amex, it's, that's not our focus. This is our focus here, is converting cash to digital. Because if you think about it, there's just this is how much of the money is, is electronic today at transactions. That's how much is still cash and check. So it doesn't make sense to squabble with the other people about this. There's other people that worry about market share. Our job is to, to get this part here, right? How to grow that. So that's really our business is, is electronic commerce. And in different countries, it looks different. There's numerous studies that say that this is actually really, really good for an economy to not be sort of cash-based, to be more electronic-based. Um, so that's actually a, a nice, noble thing that, that we kind of work on. Now, my group uh, took a look at this electronic commerce and say, now what is, what is the next big thing in electronic commerce? So there's a few, but one of them just screams at you is Internet of Things, right? It's all electronic. It's all electronic commerce, right? Remember, it's not just payments, it's commerce transactions, right? People moving value around, right? So where do we start with that? That's huge. You know, is it healthcare? Is it, you know, cars? Is it, you know, home stuff, Nest devices, uh, watches, refrigerators, TVs? Where, where do you start? It's just huge, right? So um, we need to learn about that. So. <clears throat> so what do we do? We said, well, let's let's innovate. So, so we like getting our hands dirty. We like to accelerate this, right? So, how do we accelerate that kind of electronic commerce, right? Because we want more of it. We want it faster, but we care a lot about how it happens. So we, our brand is built on security, right? So. We like security, we like interoperability, we like standards. Those are the things that move a whole ecosystem forward. Right? Um, actually, that's a great example about tokenization again. Right? The, the idea for, for tokenization came from, uh, you remember when Target had its database breached and a few other notable companies, right? So we look at that, and, and that's a problem in our ecosystem. That's a messy thing. That's a thing that's bad, right? So how do we help that go away? So um, as if you have any cards on file, if you're any app, big or small, any company that, that has cards on file, that database is, pardon the pun, it's a target for bad guys around the world, right? And they're working really hard to get that. So they get that information. They go print cards and have them work in five different countries in about an hour and a half. So that's bad, right? We don't like that. It, it erodes the trust in our brand, which isn't good. Right? So it's bad for the merchant, it's bad for you guys as card holders, right? So um, we started this invention called tokenization. And to explain it simply, it's um, it, take your card number and the information in, encrypt it, and then give something back that looks exactly like a card number, but it's not. So for a, a merchant, what they would say is, look, I don't want these cards here. Take them, give me some tokens back. But that token, I only want it to work when it buys from me. Like it can't go work at the gas station and the groceries. It has to work with me only, right? And I only want it good for $100 a transaction, no more than that. And I want it good for a month. After a month, throw it away, give me new ones. So just think about what that means for bad guys, right? Why would you go steal that? You know, you don't want to go buy everything no matter where it is, at Target or Neiman Marcus, right? It just You can't print that card and go use it somewhere else. It doesn't make sense, right? So the level of security it adds to e-commerce is just huge. And again, if it's stolen, your bank's not calling you up and saying, I'm sorry, I have to change your card, right? That's really a pain, right? Because you got your card number in 20 places with all those automatic things coming out every month, right? So. 
So that's something that you're never ever going to hear about unless you're in the industry, this tokenization. But it's huge for security and it's good for e-commerce. That's an ecosystem thing. So we started that invention. It came out of actually one of the guys in our group, one of the executives actually started with it. We started building it and then we brought in our competitors. We brought in Amex and MasterCard and we finished that together and then we gave it to the industry as a spec. So in some ways we realized that in our industry, fragmentation is not good. Right? Interoperability is good. This kind of thing is good for everybody. Let's put it out there and we can fight for market share in other ways. But let's go fix something bad in the ecosystem. Right? And that's also the approach we're trying to take to Internet of Things. Right? So um, how can we accelerate it, but how can we have it happen in a good way? So let's innovate. Right? So we just, before we went out to the world and said, hey, we're Internet of Things expert, which by the way, I'm not still after all this time working on it, right? There's too much to learn. We decided to get our hands dirty. Let's go build something. Now the other thing we want to do in this, this new innovation group was to not do things the old fashioned way, big company, which is to take a year to work on the specification, you know, with 50 people around the table to get that right, and then go build it for another year. And by the time you go to the market, the market's moved somewhere else, right? So we wanted to build some rapid prototyping capabilities. So, um, so we did that. We said, now let's, let's take a, a use case for Internet of Things just to get, get to know it. So we chose connected car. Why? Two reasons. Well, well the, the intellectual reason is that that eco, part of the ecosystem is kind of far along compared to the other ones, right? But the other one is just, I like cars. Cars are fun. So <laughs> it's more... And it's more fun to do show and tell with cars than it is a refrigerator. So, uh, so we did. We actually um, we did this experiment, and we wanted to build this rapid prototyping capability. So, uh, with the help of our, our friends at Accenture and some others, we actually built uh, four car apps that pulled information from the car, and we used beacons at the uh, merchant site to create a new user experience for stuff you do every week. Right? You buy gas, you park your car, and you get takeout. Right? So we built four apps that did that in 10 weeks. Not bad, right, for, for anybody, let alone Visa. Right? Now, these aren't ready for the App Store kind of apps. They're innovation apps. They really work. They do all that integration, but we, we got our hands dirty with it, and we learned some stuff. And I'll tell you that the main thing that I learned is the Internet of Things ecosystem is a complete mess. It's just, right? It's just messy. It's, uh, if you think about it from an architecture perspective, which we spent some weeks doing, you looked at, I can't make sense of this, right? So we started to, you know, put the components together, you know, and all the different players and this kind of thing. And it's like Swiss cheese, but with Limburger and, you know, all on top, it's, ah, it's a mess. There's holes in it. There's scruffy parts. It's, it's, not, it's not complete yet. So the question was, what do we do? How do we help? <clears throat> so um, we knew we can't do this on our own. So the other thing selfishly I wanted to do is say, let's start working with partners. And so we took one of those apps. We took the, um, the Quick Serve Restaurant app. And uh, we built, um, we decided to build that out with some world-class partners. And so uh, we actually launched this at World, Global World Congress <clears throat> a few months ago. I'll show you the video of the demo that I do at this thing. So we had a demo there. <clears throat> but um, so we had Pizza Hut. Uh, we had uh, a mobile operator. Since there might be press around, I can't give all the names, right? So we had a mobile operator. We had a car company, <clears throat> a really cool car company, by the way. Um, and we had Accenture uh, helping us to, to build this all together as an experiment, right? So the idea is everybody sees this from a completely different perspective, right? You're trying to order food from your car, and when you get there, you have a different pickup experience, right? So the car company sees that very differently than the connectivity company, than the, the restaurant, right? But when you get around the table and you start talking about you know, each talks about their aspirations. What do they want to happen? What do they hope doesn't happen? What are the things they're afraid of happening, right? 
then you can really get more of an ecosystem view of the whole thing. And you can kind of agree where the holes are. And if you agree on what a good solution kind of looks like, maybe we have a chance to go finding an answer for that. Maybe we build it, maybe we go find one of these companies out there and help them do that along. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, uh, we have just uh, started a, a venture capital program uh, a few months ago. That's actually part of the Innovation Strategic Partnerships group is, is this thing. So we're not publicizing it too big uh, yet, but the idea was, you know, there's some really cool tech. Actually, we, we were an early investor in Square. You might not know that. People say, do you like Square? Do you not like it? We love Square. Because right, we want more places for you to use your card, right? So what Square did was it, there are places you're using right now that use Square that never took cards before. So for us, that's great. That's converting that dollar that you used to spend at the farmer's market into electronic money, right? So that's good for us. We like that. So we like that kind of technology. We like what that does. So we invested in them. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're the only one in the world. It's like, this is a good thing. So let's put the Visa brand behind it. So people take it more seriously. <clears throat> the other one uh, that's a good example, probably one you never heard of. Anybody heard about Samsung Pay that just got announced a little while ago, right? So um, Samsung Pay was announced after Apple Pay. It's a hard act to follow, right? <clears throat> so they were looking for a differentiator. So we invested in a, a, a small company that had a technology that was kind of quirky. It had a dongle. It basically, it could, you could wave it over a, a card reader, you know, a, where you swipe your card, and it would send over electronically the MagStripe information that was there. Okay. But nobody really wants to carry a dongle around. So we, were, we said, you know, you should do this a little bit differently. So we invested in them, and we uh, said so you should use our tokenization. Maybe you should go after embedding it in mobile phones. So um, because of one of the great things about Visa and Cisco's and others is you have partners. You have a, a name that you can pull in partners, right? So um, compared to my time in Silicon Valley in sort of C round companies, you don't have a brand anybody's ever heard of. They're not, and they haven't heard of it and they're not going to for a long time, right? So pulling in the partnerships really hard. At Visa, it's a lot easier. It's more fun being on this side of the fence, right? So we were able to introduce them to Samsung. And Samsung, and this is kind of cool technology, let's embed it. They invested in them, and then Samsung ended up buying the company. And what they have is basically when you have uh, NFC, which is what Apple Pay and Samsung Pay are built on, you, you know, wave your phone over a terminal. That's great, but only about a third of the terminals, actually, I might be wrong, less than half of the terminals in the U.S. are enabled with that. So it's rapidly changing, but still half don't. But with this technology, basically it'll work on almost any terminal, right? So that gave Samsung a competitive advantage, what they were looking for, right? Now, as an investor, all that happened in about eight months, right? So anybody that's been in a small company, investment is nice, but you really don't want, if the money you prefer is a sale, a sale from a strategic account that gets you more sales is even better. So Samsung was nice. We were able to introduce them to that. Um, investment money is okay, but you have to give something up for it, and you got some other voice telling you what to do. So that's it's okay money, but you prefer revenue. But the real money you want is the exit, right? That's what you want. You want to sell your company and go buy that fast sports car and go buy that big house, right? So we were able to do all that, right? We're able to help a company, you know, sort of pivot a little bit. We were able to make an introduction so they can actually sell something and have a great reference customer. It ended up being an, an acquisition as well, right? So we're never a uh, primary investor. We're trying to be a strategic investor in, in that kind of, kind of sense, right? <clears throat> so we got our hands dirty. We built something. We said, okay, let's go bring it with partners. Then we said, let's, let's do a demo at Mobile World Congress. Um, I'll show you the, uh, the demo that we do. This is the Pizza Hut demo. We've done a couple more since then. Now let's see if I can make it work. This is at South by Southwest. Somebody took a video of it. So. Uh-oh. This is Innovation Team. And you're probably wondering why I'm sitting in a VMW here at South by Southwest in front of the Visa booth. Well, 
This is a connected car, and we are into electronic commerce, and soon electronic commerce is going to be coming from your car. So we want that to happen faster, but better. So we are showing a demo of an app we're going to build with some world-class partners in the next few weeks with uh, a car company, Pizza Hut, uh, Accenture, and a mobile operator to try and find ways to help this move faster, but more securely and more ubiquitously so the whole ecosystem can go forward faster so this can be in your car sooner rather than later. So I'm going to show you the demo of the app we're going to build, and this is uh, basically going to order food on your way home and pick it up at the store when you get there. So uh, let's order a pizza. So hit the button here and pick which store we want to take it from. And I'm going to go into my past orders. And oops, can't do this if you're driving, but we're not. So let's see, I'm feeling like a veggie lover's pizza here. And there's my order, so let's place that. Now that goes up via cellular to the e-commerce site, down to the store, and they're making my pizza. All normal stuff, except when I get to the store, because there we have a beacon in the parking place that my car detects it, the app here detects that, and it automatically wakes up when I get there and sends them my payment information, my loyalty information, my order information, and then they say, hey, we'll be out and bring your pizza out to you in just a minute. <clears throat> and here it says, oh, look, come back two more times to get your free pizza. But my experience was just, I just parked my car, and magic happens, and my stuff comes out to me. So that's how we're trying to make information from the car and beacons give you a better experience for something you do every week. Wow, sound effects, sound effects. So that's the demo we gave at Mobile World Congress and I don't know if you've ever been to Mobile World Congress, oh, thank you very much. Get a free bottle of water afterwards. There's a whole bunch of them down here, by the way, just got stacks of water. Um, so a couple of things to know about Mobile World Congress. First, it's just about 100,000 people. It's, it's pretty big. It's the biggest thing in mobile. Um, but Visa is not central to mobile. We're tangential to that thing. And um, that demo there got more press worldwide. It was like the fifth most talked about thing of the whole conference. It shocked us all, right? But part of it was capturing the imagination of people. It was something you do all the time, right? Doing it differently, and plus it, it helped having a convertible. That always helps when you <laughs> have a cool car. Um, but being able to picture this stuff in, in real life as something that's tangibly happening. So we're building that right now with them, and they're actually looking at launching it sort of around the country later in the year. I'm not going to use beacons. That was just us playing with stuff. Right? There's five different ways you can do that. So. We're, we're doing this not only with them, but with, with some others as well. Um, that actually isn't my favorite demo. If I could take a minute and tell you my favorite demo, it's so simple. Uh, we actually built it um, a couple weeks ago, and uh, we're actually looking to have this out in the real world by the end of the year. It's, it's about parking, right? So how many have used a parking app before? They're convenient, right? It's like, okay, which car am I in? What zone number? I want to stay for an hour, right? It's nice. It warns you when your time's almost up, right? <clears throat> okay, great experience. Well, watch this. Here's a new experience. You find a parking space. You pull up to the parking space. You put your car in park. The app opens automatically. It says, do you want to park? You say yes. Demo over. That's it. You say yes. <laughs> That's it. How do you demo that, right? You say, yeah, you go off, you go have your coffee, you meet with your friends, go some shopping, come back, hop in your car, put it in drive, and you drive away. The only thing you had to do was say yes. Right? That's great when technology can make something stupid simple. Right? That's when it's supposed to be. Right? Does that, does that beat a parking up kind of experience? Yeah, it's kind of nice. So the technology behind that, those, not rocket science, sorry. Rocket science friend. So. Rocket scientist, by the way. So. Actual rocket scientist. Um, he hates when I do that. So. <clears throat> Two more times? Okay. Later on, I'll do it again. I didn't know you can turn that shade of red. That's. Uh, yeah, it's, you're getting smaller in the seat, too. That's, so the technology is actually pretty simple, right? So. Uh, because it's, it's connected to the car, 
when you pull up and put it in park. There's beacons radiating you all the time when you're driving around. You don't want your car ping, 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 open up. That doesn't make sense, right? So you put it in your park, you're telling the car I'm parking. So it listens, it sees a parking beacon or something that tells it, hey, and so the app wakes up automatically. Do you want to park? And it tells you that it's you know, $2 an hour and that it's a four hour maximum. And you say, yes, I want to park. Tick, 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 this starts a payment session. You get out of your car, go do your stuff, come back, put it in drive. You're telling the app, I don't want to park anymore, I'm leaving. And you leave the vicinity of the beacon and it knows you have left, so it stops the payment session. You didn't have to guess how long I was going to be there. You didn't have to you know, say, oops, I better add more time. Actually, when I was giving this demo last week at our own payments forum, I was right at that particular place. There's a lady in the driver's seat where I'm giving the demo. She's, oh, t- what, what? I forgot my parking. She had a parking app, right? And she opens up, swear to God, this is actually a true story, 46 seconds left. She should <laughs> add money. So she got it right away, so it's, it's, sign me up. So, but that's, that's the idea is how do you take things you do all the time, internet of things, cars and internet of thing, things, right? And how do you make payment easier, right? Nobody likes to pay, payment's the worst fun. Nobody likes putting coins in, nobody likes putting your card on file, right? Nobody likes standing in line at the register. Actually, one of the things we're doing with uh, Cisco is uh, they pulled a great session together with a few big companies and uh, it was about retail. So over the course of two days we tried to come up with something really innovative that we can actually help a big retailer come out with in like a 60 day thing. And we came out with a a thing called Smart Shopping Cart. So, can't give names but picture a store you go to where great deals on things, you put a lot of stuff in the cart and then you get to the line, right? Nobody goes to the store to buy two things, right? Sometimes you see the line and say, oh, I don't have time, I gotta go. But the, the worst part, after all that fun of putting things in the cart, is standing there waiting, right? Even at Safeway, it's not fun either. Even at Macy's, it's not fun. Nobody likes paying, right? They make you, and they make, it's pain. Why do they do that to you? I don't know. All that fun, and then you have to wait in line to give them the money. That should be like the easiest part, right? So how's this for an experience? Instead of waiting in the queue, right? You put things in your cart, and you walk out. Nice, right? No queue, just walk right by, smile, wave at the poor people standing in line, right? So what happens? A smart shopping cart would know what you put inside. Somehow it would tell you what's in there. I mean, it could be something on the cart, it could be an app, it doesn't really matter, right? As long as you know what it is. And then as you're walking, somewhere you would say, yes, that's the stuff. So you do have to say yes, I'm sorry, that's the user experience, you have to say yes. And then you walk through some portal with beacons or God knows what to make sure you did what you did and you're done. You just gotta say yes and walk out. Why should paying be difficult, right? So um, we're trying to make the payment be an easier part of the experience. So, what's next? That was an example, oops. I wasn't supposed to go there. Need some help on this one. It's on my screen. There we go. Is that a freaky picture or what? That's that's my picture. I'm trying to say collaborative innovation, right? So there are things, I've sort of broken it down in my mind into three things we kind of need to pay attention to. We got the internal stuff. So we got our own, you know, freaky, really smart people who are trying to make things happen. So let them do that, right? So I'm more focused on the outside. And part of it is there are things that market makers can do together that nobody else can do to move an ecosystem forward, right? So as we're doing this with uh, the Pizza Hut thing, Cisco is a great example of that. One of the reasons I like working with Cisco is like us, they think about the ecosystem. It's not only about how do I advantage Cisco, it's really, they can, because of their market share, they have the luxury of just growing the pie, right? And that's the way we think as well. So it's kind of fun to work with companies like that. So you get some market makers together and you can actually change things if you agree on it and you come up with a solution. So there's some things that, 
And, and so we're doing that. The strategic partnerships um, is a component of that, right? So we're looking at the Internet of Things as, you know, some of those holes. What can we and others do together as market makers to advocate for something to make a change, right? But that's only, that's only really a part of it. <clears throat> oh, I should tell you a story about... Uh, I should tell you a story. So there's another company that, when I was at South by Southwest, I was giving a demo to a, um, happened to be another quick serve restaurant. And these are the conversations you like to have when you're innovating, okay? So um, it's a, uh, a family run company, rather large company. Actually the largest drive through company in the US, which I didn't know before this, right? So the CEO comes, he's got a couple of his tech guys. And you know, I want him to sit in the front seat to do the demo, but you know, he sits in the back of the convertible in the middle and his two tech guys are in the front. So I started telling the story you saw before. And I swear, halfway through, he turns to me like this, he says, we're in. I'm not, I'm not asking anybody to be in, I'm just giving a de demo, right? <clears throat> but uh, he, uh, uh, great personality, he says, you know, it's fun being CEO, you can make fast decisions, right? Which is always, it's always hard to find the decision maker, right? Let me get to the demo first, but no, it's okay. But this, this is what he said. He said, you know, we're, we're the, the largest drive through in the US, and we have a problem with queuing in the morning at the drive through It's the busiest time is, is in the morning for breakfast. And he said, last year alone, we spent over $100 million just adding extra drive through windows. Now, family-run business, that came out of his pocket, right? That's real money, that's not company money, and that came out of his family's pocket, right? $100 million. He said, with what I just saw, I could have had that fixed, you know, so much faster. I could have provided a cool user experience that my competitors can't touch, and I could have saved $99 million too, right? So that wasn't somebody talking about, now how do we integrate, you know, this and this and, it, no, didn't care about it. He saw the business reason, why are we gonna do that? So as we think about these Internet of Things experiences for retailers or for anybody, it, when you can grab onto that thing like that where people get the why, not about the tech, it's about the user experience or it's about some other business issue that it touches, that's when things move forward really fast. And you get someone like that to put it in the market, everybody else does it, right? Everybody follows, right? So. <clears throat> Five? Oh, yeah. Oh, return. Oh, my bad. Okay. I'll, I will finish up with this last one here. It's a bit fuzzy. Um, pop quiz. This is the personal slide, by the way. Um, what flag is that? Egypt, yes, Egypt. Uh, so I was in Egypt during the middle of the revolution running a software company. That's why I have this here. And this is about revolution because the, the real revolutionary innovations aren't going to come from the big companies. It's, we we kind of have bounds to work through, right? It's going to come from the small companies that don't know any better. Right, they got nothing to lose. They don't have any big billions of revenue to, at risk. They don't know anybody. They don't know the, how stupid the idea is. But those are the ones you need to pay attention to because there might be spark of something great there. So, we used to be fortress visa. You could not get to us if you tried, no matter how great an idea you had. So we're now trying to be more warm, cuddly visa. Um, not quite there yet. <laughs> But it really is, we're trying to come up with a, a model for, models for engaging with the ecosystem at all levels, from you know, seed round all the way through the big companies, right? So you'll, you'll find more of us around doing more things like this. Okay, so um, I won't tell you about ecosystem, you already know about that, that's diving in the Red Sea. This is where we wanna go, collaborative innovation, taking off, doing really cool things together, okay? So thank you very much for the time. Martin.